another episode of Left Hand Reviews. Now if you watch any of my other reviews you know that I'm a huge fan of Andreas Probst uh, card game Elemental Clash and relatively recently he released uh, kind of a new version of the game called the Master Set. So here we have the first official expansion to the Master Set called Legendary Legacy. If you've never played any of the Elemental Clash games before the Master Set is a perfect place to jump off. And uh, while you're at it, pick up the latest expansion pack here, Legendary Legacy, because this is a great expansion pack. You're going to get over 250 new cards uh, in this expansion, including a ton of new spellcasters, new types of spells like equip spells, your familiars. Also, there's a, a strong focus on tribes within this, meaning there are several cards that uh, all go together and benefit from each other. Uh, and play well off of each other and you can build great great decks uh, with that idea in mind So let's dive right in. I'm going to show you some of the new card types, equip spells, familiar spirits uh, Some of the new spellcasters and some of my favorite cards. So let's take a look at Elemental Clash Legendary Legacy Yeah, so I wasn't kidding when I say you get over 250 new cards in this expansion, which is awesome. I mean, it expands the, your deck building capability so much with just one expansion. So let's go through some of the uh, new card types. So as you know from the original uh, Master Set, that uh, you have Spellcasters. And in this version, you have 10 new, all new, never before seen Spellcasters. Amazing art as usual. All new abilities. And uh, these are just a great way to enhance your play. Let me show you a couple of my favorite uh, of the new spellcasters. Og the Goblin Maniac is really cool because whenever you discard a card from your hand, you deal one damage to target creature or player. And his flip effect is uh, play any spell that is not a permanent or equip type spell uh, from your archive for free. So he's, he's really cool. Uh, I also really like uh, Omnia Mistress of Denial. <laughs> Opponents' uh, spells cost plus one to cast. That's just that's just mean. Um, and uh, here's another one that I really enjoy playing with. If a card would be put into the archive from anywhere, purge it instead. <laughs> it's so mean. And also, creatures you control get plus two attack and have purge until the end of the turn. Uh, it's his flip effect. This can be uh, this can be a horribly annoying card, but it's uh, really fun to play with. Alright, so also in here you're going to get a bunch of new uh, neutral element stones and actually this really cool special rainbow stone. Um, but as you can see here, you're going to get a ton of different um, new neutral element stones that do all sorts of special things. You also need to be aware, as you can see on this card, it says unique on it. So there's several really powerful cards in this expansion set. Uh, where you can only have one at a time in any of your decks. So they're going to have the unique keyword, so you really need to keep that in mind when building your decks. So like I mentioned earlier, this expansion is going to have a focus on tribes. So for example, for the Earth Element, you have your Trolls. Here's an example of the Troll Shaman, and his play effect says, Return a Troll card from your archive to your hand. So you can see that a lot of these Troll cards are all going to benefit from each other and work together. You have your Spirit Overlord for the Wind Element. It says other spirits you control get plus one attack, plus one defense, and have Quick Attacker. For the Water side, you have the Merfolk. It has a play effect that says reveal the top three cards of your spell book. Put all creatures with the type Merfolk into, uh, into your hand. Put the rest of the cards under your spell book in any order. And finally, we have the Goblins for the Fire Element. Other goblins you control get plus one attack, plus one defense, and whenever a card you control deals damage to an opponent, he or she discards one card from his or her hand. So, the tribal aspect is really neat because not only do you have a lot of different cards in this expansion that you can choose from, but you can make very cohesive decks with a lot of cards that build off of each other, which again is just another way um, 
to create your decks and, and another reason why I find this game so so much fun. Now you also in here have a whole bunch of brand new neutral cards. So these ones that do not have a specific element uh, stone type. So you can use any type for them. They're great to supplement um, decks that you already have. If you'd like to stick with one particular element stone type, um, well you can still get in some of these neutral creatures and neutral spells in there without having to worry about adding multiple types of element stones um, but still be able to augment the abilities of your deck. So for example here's a really cool one there I like. It's called Greater Armor the bearer gets plus one attack and plus five defense. Now this brings up one of the new card types that is the uh, equip spells. So the way the equip spells work is that you're going to play them on your element stones just like you normally would with the game. And During the standby phase when you clear your element stones you're going to take this and attach it to one of your creatures or you can put it off to the side. And now it's also note you can actually attach to your opponent's creatures as well because there are uh, negative or there can be negative equip spells or there may be certain reasons um, that you would want to attach uh, equip spells to your opponent. And uh, another neat thing is if you choose not to attach uh, an equip spell at the time that you clear your element stone stack, you can just play it off to the side and during future standby phases you can attach it to another creature. Um, at a later time. You can also swap them between creatures during that phase and also when a creature it, uh, leaves play or goes to your uh, archive or whatever the equip spell is going to not follow it. It just goes back off to the side of the board and then you can uh, equip it at a later time. Here's another cool one called Greater Battle Axe. This one's going to give the wielder plus four attack. Another one that I really like called the Reaper Scythe. If the wielder deals damage to a creature, destroy that creature. If wielder is an undead creature, it gets plus one attack and plus one defense. Now another thing you're going to have in this particular expansion is uh, um, the immunity attribute. So you can see here in Grimlock the Cruel, he's a dragon. And uh, he's a unique card, so you can only have, of course, one in your deck at a time. But he also has an immunity to water. So various cards in this set are going to have an immunity to one thing or another. So this means he is more or less immune to any water type creature. And he has a three ranged attack. So keep that in mind when you're looking at uh, cards and building your decks. Certain ones that have immunity. Also keep in mind when you are building decks of a particular color. That you know that your opponent could have immunity to certain things in your deck. So you need to be prepared to combat that. All right, and finally, I mentioned familiars. Uh, familiars are a new type of creature. So, for example, here we can see the troll familiar, and uh, basically what happens is when you clear your element stone stack, you can either put the troll familiar into play as its own creature, uh, which in this case is not terribly powerful, it's a zero one, one or you can attach it, more or less, to another creature in play. And when you do that, you typically get a benefit, because that's really what they're made to do. So this says the master of this familiar, which is the person that it's attached to, gets plus one attack and plus one defense, and when it would be destroyed, you destroy the troll familiar instead. So it's kind of like a shield in the sense. Then we also have uh, this dwarf familiar. This is a, a golem type spirit. And uh, it says the master of this familiar gets plus one attack and plus one defense, and whenever it attacks, you may put an element stone from your hand into play. You can see how these can greatly augment uh, the powers of your creatures um, when they're attached. Also, you can attach as many familiars as you want to a creature. But note, when the creature leaves play, the master leaves play, all the spirits that are with it are destroyed. So it's a little bit different than the equip spells that kind of live uh, forever unless specifically destroyed. These familiars are very, very fragile. Well, before we wrap up, I just want to go over some of my favorite cards in this new uh, expansion. So the first one we have here is Necronomicon. So this is a neat card, of course, and it says, uh, If you would draw a card, instead you may put a card from your archive into your hand. If a card will be put in your archive, purge it instead. So that's, that's really cool. Then uh, 
On the far side, you have this uh, really neat spell called Royal Flames. It says deal two damage to a target player. If he or she controls at least one card with unique, deal four damage instead. Um, I really like this one, the Merfolk Familiar. So this is a familiar that we talked about. The master of this familiar gets plus one attack, plus one defense, and you draw a card uh, whenever it deals damage to a player. Orb of Hermes. This is another unique uh, card. It's a permanent spell. It says you may look at the cards in your spell book and rearrange them, uh, or rearrange their order rather, as you wish, any time. Are you kidding me? This is awesome. <laughs> it's so it's just silly cool. All right, Will of the Winds. This is a flash spell for the uh, wind element. You may purge, target permanent, or equip spell. You may draw one card. Instead of playing this to a suitable element stone stack, you may purge this card and another air card from your hand. So that's a great way to get this out very, very quickly if you don't have three element stones uh, to play it on, or if you want to keep three element stones uh, clear this turn for another card. Here we have the Shrewd Magpie. When the Shrewd Magpie attacks a player, uh, attacks a player and is not blocked, you draw a card. And uh, this is a really neat neutral stone because normally, if you remember, neutral stones do not produce an element type; they produce a neutral uh, element. But this says produces one energy of an element uh, another element stone in play would produce. So that's really neat. So what do you think about Elemental Clash Legendary Legacy? Uh, if you're new to the Elemental Clash family, note that this is an expansion, um, so you'll have to pick up the master set um, before you can use this. But if you decide to do so, I highly recommend you pick up this expansion set. If you already have several of the Elemental Clash sets, um, this you can purchase at any time, even if you don't own the master set. Um, but you have some of the other sets, some of the older sets that, uh, that the designer released. This will integrate perfectly with them. There's no issue there. The card backs are the same, etc. So overall, I really like this expansion set. I love equip spells. I love familiars. Um, I like all the new spell casters, which, you know, you can have several decks uh, built. But just by adding a spell caster or swapping spell casters be um, between them and uh, your opponent using different spell casters can totally change the way that the game is played because it's altering things that happen during play, it alters the number of cards you draw, it alters the number of cards you're allowed in your hand, uh, and other things. So it really makes a huge difference to play. I also like that the designer um, seems to always have counters to everything. So you have dragon cards that have immunity to to different um, element types, but then you have plenty of cards that can destroy dragons. Uh, you have spells that do one thing, but then there's spells that uh, your opponent can have to counter them. So there's really no uh, uh, unbalanced situations because there's always a way to counter everything else, which uh, is indicative of a very, very good game. I really like the inclusion of all the uh, uh, additional neutral creatures and neutral spells. Again, that's a great way to augment your single element decks. And of course, the artwork in the game is fantastic as well. So, again, this is just another wonderful expansion to uh, Elemental Clash. You're going to get 250 new cards, new spellcasters, new card types. Great artwork, great ways to augment decks you already have. If you are new to the uh, family, pick up the master set and definitely I'd recommend picking this up with it because it, it just makes it that much better. You have that many more cards in your pool to draw from when you create decks. It's a great tournament style game. You can have a bunch of cards uh, out and uh, you and, and up to three opponents can uh, draft cards and create your own decks and play right then. I mean it's just a wonderful card game. If you've watched any of my other reviews on it you know I really really enjoy it. This expansion is no exception. So if you have a chance to play Elemental Clash, please do, and uh, I promise you'll enjoy it. So thanks for watching another episode of Left Hand Reviews. Make sure to follow me on my website at lefthandreviews.com, Twitter at Left Hand Reviews, Facebook uh, slash Left Hand Reviews, and uh, I'll see you next time.